What does poverty look like here in Chattanooga? I can start with mine. I had a big issue with um, Enterprise Health for a long time. Everybody was so excited with Volkswagen. We got Volkswagen, we got on the front page, we got Amazon. We're so excited about all of these things coming. But the biggest market that's targeted for working at those places, there's no transportation to get there. If you don't have a car, how do you get to work? Carter did not go after Enterprise though. So that was one thing that really stuck out with me as far as people living in poverty. Many times, we take it for granted. We have a car, we can get to where we need to go. We have resources that other people don't have. But that's my experience. I'm just interested to see if anybody else has experiences. My area of expertise is in the grandparents raising grandchildren mm -hmm. in which you have roughly 50% are sitting below poverty line, another 20% sitting at poverty line with limited, if any, available resources because the majority of the grandparents don't trust the system in order to get legal custody of the grandchildren so they cannot apply for any financial assistance, they can't apply for food stamps, nothing. So the grandparents are stuck in limbo falling into the hole deeper and deeper each month. And uh, because I had to take care of my two grandchildren mm -hmm. and their mom died. And when um, my oldest one is gone out, but I still got my granddaughter. And all I get is Social Security. But when I did apply for some uh, food stamp, they told me I had too much Social Security to come in. So by the time I get to pay my mortgage and my bills, I got nothing hard enough to, you know, to um, do this. Put an adequate amount, so we still eat. We're not gonna go home with us together. But by the same token, to um, not be struggling and trying to figure out what we're gonna hear, what we're gonna eat there, um, it, it's a struggle. So I know it's happening to me. Mm -hmm. There are those, and like I said, in East Lake, mm -hmm. we're the focus. There's a lot of that going on in my area. Director of the Educational Opportunity Center, and we have for the last 16 years helped low-income. Uh, residents access education mm -hmm. and of course we see poverty every day two of the things that stand out is limited bus transportation for night classes at chat state um, another issue is proprietary schools which are typically very expensive preying on a low-income population to get them signed up for classes which ends in loan default and brings credit records um, so those are the two issues that we see um, that could be helps the most to, and our motto is to help people make good choices to come out of poverty. I grew up in poverty mm -hmm. and made choices so that I didn't stay there and that's why we exist. So I think empowering people to make those good choices. I was looking for a place to stay and I ended up finding a six month lease that allowed my giant dog in North Shore. And I found myself living in this house that's been divided up into six apartments. Mm -hmm. And in the course of living here over the last seven months, I have really gotten to know my neighbors. And just last night, like it, it's crazy that this happened today, um, there was this one woman who was staying partly like, on the couch of the person living under my apartment. Mm -hmm. And I, I've kind of gotten to know her, and then she just recently, like, transferred, like, she's been kind of, like, couch surfing between the two, and I was, like, confused by it. I was trying not to pay attention and get involved in neighbor drama. But it turns out, like, she was a social worker. She has a master's degree. She was out of a job, you know. That's hitting home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and she just, she's found herself, you know, in this position where she was living, you know, paying her rent and doing fine, and then she was one paycheck away from losing everything, and now she finds herself with all of her possessions in her car. So last night, I was spending time online trying to find, like, what is there in Chattanooga for my neighbor? And I was shocked to find out there's nowhere she can go. I mean, switching between all of the couches in our little house in North Shore. And, and North Shore is such an interesting area. I mean, it's beautiful. Like, there are, I'm, my house is surrounded by a lot of really, really nice houses. <laughs> but in between those houses, there's a lot of poverty. There's a lot of people living with like six people in a one room. 
apartment mm -hmm. where everyone's splitting rent. And like these are not cases where, you know, it's either this or living in your car. And you know, it's not they're all working jobs. Mm -hmm. Everyone works really hard. They're constantly like everyone shares different shifts and like takes turns. But it's something that really hits home for me. It's something that My mother lives about two lived about two blocks in Boone Heights. Uh -huh. So I saw a combination of crime, poverty, elderly issues also. But my concern is that the food desert, I'm sure that's not a part of the issue, but the food there desert, oh yeah, issue. Oh, yeah. <laughs> additional, yes. but this is an additional penalty on the people living in the area. Uh, you have to pay for transportation, taxis, you know, which are pretty expensive. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of my issue. I kind of saw it all, crime, poverty, and, and the elderly issues. 